today I'm going to be taking you through a beginner's basic hip mobility routine. So many of us are living with tight hips, me included, and these are some of my favorite exercises that can help release the hips out. This is great to do maybe if you're on a rest day and you just feel like you want to move your body and open your hips up, or you could incorporate it as part of your warm up. So we're just going to get started with the feet slightly wider than hip width apart. Be aware of your posture, bringing it up and around, placing hands on hips, and we're gonna start with a series of hip circles. So I always like to start the hip circles a little bit smaller, keeping the feet grounded onto the floor. And think I like to spread out the toes and really feel your feet in towards the floor. Then, as we start to get moving, you can start to take it that little bit bigger. And you'll find that as your hip mobility improves and increases, you might even be able to get even further around. So just take these as big as feels good for you. Let's take it back the other way. Again, start it out small. Just feel, feel for any tight spots. You might also notice like clicks and pops, and that's usually just the connective tissue that runs across the bones and into the joint, just having that little bit of tightness. Again, as you do this more, they tend to ease off a little bit. And let's do one more in this direction. And we're just gonna place the hands behind the head and we're gonna come into a good morning. So just be aware of your posture, opening out the chest, bringing the elbows back. So here we're gonna keep the feet, heels grounded into the floor and I want you to send the hips backwards, hinging from the hip, keeping the back in a nice straight line just until you start to feel a bit of a, a, a lengthening in the hamstrings, then press your heels into the floor, squeeze your butt and come up. So because we're just doing this as a mobility or even a warm-up series, we just want to take it to where we start to feel that stretch and lengthen, and then it's a contraction through the glutes and the hamstrings as we come back up to stand. Again, as you start to get a few into these, you might find that you can take it that little bit further. Everybody's range is going to be slightly different, and of course, with more practice, comes a deeper movement. And we're just going to repeat one more of those. Next, we're going to be coming into a assisted deep squat. So we're going to start with just a few normal squats just to get the hips warmed up. So just See how far you can take down that squat. You can take the hands down from the center. I kind of like to hold them out in front. Bringing the weight in through the heels. And a squat, really we want to work towards having the depth in our squat. Having good hip mobility is going to allow you to get more from your workout. So when you're squatting in your workouts, you can get down deeper. We can get to where the legs become parallel with the floor. One more. And then we're gonna, just gonna get either bringing yourself to the couch or just gonna use the bench today, just pulling this in. Now, whatever you're using for your surface to assist the squat, you wanna make sure it's quite sturdy. It's not gonna be moving anywhere. So you wouldn't wanna use a chair. A couch is a great way to do it. I like to do it actually on the back of the couch. It's really solid to hold on to. I'm gonna take my feet a little bit wider. And then I'm just going to be placing my hands onto the surface and then I'm going to come down in to that deep squat position. Now when we're in this deep squat position, we want to think about opening up the chest and just take that little wiggle side to side. And then lifting it up and repeat. It might take you a few times to get all the way down. Breathing through the movement. When we're working on mobility work, we want to take our time, so don't worry if you can't get into this low position. The more you practice it, the lower you will get. And this is not just hip mobility. This is requiring mobility through the ankles, the knees, the hips. My low squat actually has taken a lot of work because I've got very tight ankles, and which is why it's quite nice to come over to one side and then the other. And you're really going to feel the work into the ankles here. Just keep swinging from side to side. And you can see I'm kind of pulling myself in. 
and there are lots of positions you can explore with this but really starting to find that low position pressing the knees outwards and then release okay we're going to come down to the floor for some hip cars so it's controlled articular rotation so controlled meaning that we are slowing our movement articulating meaning we are making it as big as we can onto all four position we're going to do about five in each direction on each leg so we're going to start with kicking the leg up behind then bringing it out to the side and then bringing it back through so control means working nice and slow articulating can you get your leg to the real far end range of your movement I just felt a nice little clunk going on in my hip then and again the more that we do these it's more like a lubrication of that ball and socket joint and really opening it up I've lost count now I'm not sure if that was five I think that was five let's reverse it so bring the knee up out to the side up and around because mobility work is not just about flexibility mobility is about that strength and control in the joint as well as its range of movement so we want it to all come together we want the joints to be strong and stable but able to move with a good range because injuries happen when we get to a limited range of movement and we meet that end and that's when injuries can take place whereas if we are better functioning in a bigger range of movement guess what less injuries occur we get less tightness and stiffness let's just sit back here release the back out roll in the spine bring it back up back to center and let's repeat other side up just taking that time when we're doing mobility work to check in with your body breathe through the movement just ask yourself where are we at can we start to feel improvements mobility work takes time and like any element of health and fitness it's going to take a little bit of patience and consistency but i know this is one habit that is definitely worth implementing whether that is finding the time just in the morning or any part maybe just over the weekend just five minutes let's reverse that to gift to yourself and doing a little bit of mobility work is just going to reap so many benefits benefits to help you get more out of your workouts but also to stop your body feeling so stiff so tight I personally suffer with lower back pain have done ever since I had my children and I did go through phases of doing lots of running which led to lots of tightnesses um, so having to do these movements has really helped me I'm definitely still not perfect I've still always got to work on them but they have helped with my lower back pain so much so we're going to come into this 90 90 position 90 degrees at front I've also got 90 degrees at the ankle because a flexed foot helps to keep the knee safe and strong and even in this position I can feel my back hip is where it's tightest my left hips always the tightest so it's almost like pinching a little bit um, if you're a little bit colder if you've done this kind of government in on a cold body then it's going to feel tighter I like to do this after I've like walked the dogs or something that I tend to be a little bit more open now 
Level one, hands onto the floor, keeping the foot flex, and we're using the weight of the body to lower ourselves down, keeping the spine long, neck lifted, and then I'm gonna press the foot and the knee down in towards the floor to come back up. So hands on the floor is going to be your first level where you've got that layer of support. As you progress over time, this change in the length of the lever just adds that little bit more resistance. So we're working down to find the end of our range and then we're pushing into the floor because we're contracting that glute and glute medius to come back up to start. Bringing it down, hold, keeping pressing on the floor. This is such a great hip and opener. I often put this into the warm up sessions with my clients because it really helps the glutes to wake up. We spend so much time sitting, release it there. We're just going to do a couple of hip swivels. Let the knees drop side to side, release any tension. Again, these are great. Just nice opening up moves. And that's the thing when we're doing mobility work, we don't want to be going into pain. It should generally feel, might feel uncomfortable in parts, but it should never be painful. Don't push through pain, practice these. And a lot of the time it is repetition. Often I'll be doing the same things over and over again with my clients, but that is the key to improvement, is repetition of the same key movements. This tends to happen where the leg wants to kind of come inwards. We can keep it in that 90-90 position. We're working on that, again, strength, but good range movement in the knee. Now much better on this side, this hip tends to open out a little bit more. We want to spiral upwards, keeping the spine long. Use the hands for support if you need. Just check that those feet are flexed. And again, dropping forward, find that pause, press into the floor. Hands are as an option. Now, doing this as kind of a follow along. So I just want you to repeat a few reps. But you can always do more if you feel you need to. I'm gonna do two lots of these because we're just gonna explore some different movements. One more. And you'll find on the second round, you can probably get that bit further. Breathe in, prepare. Exhale, shh, drop the knee in towards the floor. Again, important not to force this. I have quite tight hips, so my knee doesn't get all the way to the floor. If I had full flexibility in my hips, you'd probably find that, as you can see, I've had to lift my hip to get there, but I have some clients that can get there without having to lift the hip. And I can already see, doing a few repetitions can get that little bit further. And really important to work with the breath. The breath signifies to the body that relax, that ability to calm down. almost reassurance to the body that we're okay. We all have the ability to reach these ranges of movement. It's just tightness in our connective tissues and in our muscles that blocks us. So that's the purpose of this movement. So this time in the 90-90 position, I'm just gonna take the hand behind, you know, open out as we exhale. I reach, I love this one. It feels like such a great release in the lower back. We're getting some work through the thoracic spine as well. So although this is a hip mobility series, we get to remember the body is a kinetic chain. It is one connected tissue. Everything falls or flows from one area to the other. See, I rotated then. I felt a click going on in my hip. Nice. One more. Release, changing sides. Opening up. Two more. And then last one. And release. 
I'd love to know how you found this session. This is just a beginner's work to get you going, tuning in, feeling into your body. If you feel ready, check out. I've got an intermediate and advanced in this series, but I'd love to know how you got on with this one. And remember, consistency is gonna be the key to your progress. Just implementing five or 10 minutes in the morning, in the evening, before you go to bed, or add it into the warm up or the cool down part of your workout to get these mobility movements into your weekly schedule. Thank you so much for practicing with me. I really hope you enjoyed it and I shall see you on the next.